this is Borden Woodstock. I'm Shane Viking Heat Hammond. And today we got a special guest. We have Wes Mazur from Woodstock, who is running for city council here in Woodstock. Let's see how much your guys are clapping after the heat goes on. <laughs> now see, just like Hot Ones versions, we're going to go up in heat as I ask some questions. So we're going to try some sauces out. I call them true serums. There's one thing that happens when you eat hot stuff, the truth has to come out. So this is the best way to deal with people going into political positions. Let's see how they really stand. Wes, are you up for the challenge? Let's do it. All right. So first off, we're going to be nice and start off with this brand, Halo Heats. This is spicy olive. This was a one-off that I'm trying to get Halo Heats to bring back out because it's absolutely amazing tasting. And like I said, all these sauces are made Canadian and a lot are local. So always support local. Wes, you ready for some olives? Let's sauce them up. All right, let's go, buddy. Now, I'll tell you right now, Wes, you just need to do a bite if you want. We're not trying to, you know, destroy you or nothing like that, but this one I think you'll enjoy. So let's try the wing out. Spicy olive. Oh, the flavor. I love olives. Now, first question, Wes. Why are you personally running? Yeah, very good question. So, a few years back, I was talking to friends, neighbors, people, business in town. And uh, actually, there were some fellows that I was golfing with, and they said, hey, would you ever run for office? And I said, well, that's an interesting question. Um, years ago, I never had any interest in politics whatsoever. Um, didn't really feel there was a need to vote, didn't think it would make a difference, but uh, once I got married, starting having kids, business, getting to you know people in the community, it became more and more and more important. Um, being in Woodstock now for 10 years with my family, coming up to 10 years, Woodstock has become home. We have our business here, all of our friends and, and, uh, and others are here too, so it uh, felt like the right time to run. So I'm really uh, personally running to serve the community. Um, I've been volunteering in my professional life and personal life uh, pretty much since a teenager. Um, so really it's for servitude. I'm not really doing it necessarily for the money or, or, or a job, so to speak, but it's to literally um, help folks like us, our neighbors, business owners like here at the pub. That's why I'm running. What did you think about the spicy olive? Delicious. Absolutely <laughs> delicious. Yeah. I'm just, all about just the enough to liven it up. Just enough to liven up those taste buds. All right. I like the answer. Sounds like you're in with good intentions. We're going to go with the uh, peppers and pickles from the Hot Sauce Co. This company's out of St. Thomas. Love the owner. He's just such a nice guy, Jesse Long. And uh, this is actually one big seller here, man. Big D Sandwich Shack. They love using this sauce, and I can tell you right now, it's selling off the shelves every time he puts it out there. Yeah, I've seen the sauce a lot around town, different markets, building these big bees. You shouldn't be scared of this one. It's got a little heat to it, but it's not that bad. Ready to go? Mm. Spice it up just a bit. That's like spicy dill pickle chips. Mm -hmm. That's delicious. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> it's like garlic. For all you other <laughs> candidates that are coming up here, that one tastes great too. Mm -hmm. Now for the question. What is your profession here in Woodstock? What are you doing currently? I own a business which is local to Woodstock called Mazer Safety Incorporated. We provide services primarily to employers for things like health and safety training, inspections, audits, supply safety officers to their companies to help them ensure safety compliance and support their staff. And they also specialize in, unfortunately, serious incident investigations. So sometimes <laughs> lawyers will send me to their clients to do some uh, investigation, sort of Ministry of Labor style, that kind of thing. I work in a factory myself. I understand the importance of it, it, so it needs to be done. Yeah, and aside from that, Shane, I also uh, teach part-time as a professor at Conestoga College and also at the University of Toronto. So you're a busy man? Busy, busy. 
So is this going to affect, though, going into the counseling <laughs> position, or are you going to like concentrate now on Woodstock? Very good question. So um, just a side over, question. Just over a year, this is a good question. Just over a year and a half ago, I sold my original business, completed the sale right? It used to be called Rain River Occupational Health Facility. And that kind of also, and it wasn't necessarily 100% that it was going to run. Just the stars are aligning. But I'm pretty much working part time in the business right now, teaching part time, and that's perfect because it gives me the time, the capacity to put in the effort and the time that's needed for counsel. That's what the people want to hear. They want to make sure that whoever they put in there has the time because we want people to actually do their job. So. <laughs> Next sauce up. Oh, we got Sorry Sauce, who we actually have at the pub here right now. Yeah, people have been enjoying their sauces. Oh, he's going to sneak in for a Come shot. On. There you go. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I love all the sauces out there. And the people here have been enjoying his sauces and selling them here. And we hope to keep bringing more sauce companies to Woodstock. That's my hidden agenda because I love hot sauces. It's a, the fine wine of like all things out there. <laughs> well, it's so awesome to see Sorry Sauce just set up here off camera because, as we said before, we started filming. This is really what it's about: supporting business, supporting local folks. Um, great that you're doing this too, Shane. Right? This is uh, more about the community than it's about an individual. I'm so only about awesome. supporting, man. It's not about me. It's about supporting. Loving it. And I'm telling you right now, these wings here at the pub are huge. <laughs> well, this is that car. Like, I got a I, little extra on this one. I've been, I've been coming to the pub ever since I moved to this city, and I'm telling you right now, they always make the greatest wings, man. It's an enjoyable place some to be. Wings, and yeah. they got some great beverages here. Oh, the garlic. Let's do it. <laughs> wow. Ooh. Wow. And that's a wow for the flavor. It's got some heat, a little bit. All flavor. But so much flavor. So I got a question for you. How many people in your neighborhood in the city are supporting you? I can ask two questions. Do we have any neighbors or friends in the city that are supporting West for council? Yeah. <laughs> And that's and that's 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 not the gloat. And I I want to say thank you. <laughs> that was a great answer. That's though. a good answer. Hundred percent. Right? Um, I'm actually a little bit overwhelmed, and I kind of had to order more signs because I don't know how many we have on the street, but it's it's awesome. It shows awesome support, and um, I really believe you got to be a good neighbor first, right? You got to know what your what your neighbors are all about. Help them out. Look after look after them just as much as we look after ourselves. So. Awesome support so far. Um, it certainly shows that Woodstock is the friendly city. I know you've got great neighbors too. So oh, we yeah. Go together. It's a friendly city. All right. Let's get down to Hurtberry Farms. This is called Starless. It's a smoking awesome sauce. Eric's already jumping out there. I had to throw that in there. This is going to be a smoky barbecue sauce. And our good friends at Hurtberry make great sauces. So you need to check them out when you can. And I will be bringing them down to Woodstock, just so you know. Andrew would definitely come down here and let everybody try their sauces, though. So let's go, buddy. Did you say Herb Berry or Hurt Berry? Hurt Berry. All right, just checking. <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry, I brought a mild one for you. I didn't want I didn't want the Hurt Berry experience to be that bad. Oh, I smell so smoky. Oh, it's okay. Okay. So just so you guys all know, Wes told me that he was only going to make it past three. As soon as we started this, he said, I can't handle heat change. And I'm like, oh, I'm, well, you're going to have to because if you want to answer questions, you got to take the heat. <laughs> so he's already on number four. So number we're doing four. pretty good. Yeah, here we go. We're on a roll. I have That's to be good. impressed. That's good. These are all great sauces. I told you. I wasn't going to damage you until we get to the back of my <laughs> Provide an example of your tenacity. 
So before I, I started my first business, which was December 2009, um, that's when uh, Sarah and I still lived in Cambridge. We only had one baby at the time, which was our daughter Nadia, and, and Sarah was at home looking, looking after her baby. I lost my job first time ever, three weeks before Christmas. Um, personally, we were minus $1,500 in our bank and overdraft, credit cards were maxed out, weren't going to make the mortgage payments. Didn't know what I was going to do. We could all relate to that at some yeah, point. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, and a couple of a couple of friends, uh, one being my brother-in-law, uh, another guy that I went to high school with, they both were into their own businesses now. And they said, you're really good in fashion and that's what you do, Wes. Why don't you, why don't you start your own safety consulting company? And I thought, okay, well, I know nothing about being a business for myself. How do I get started? And there was a little bit of a problem. We had no money. Um, so one of those guys, and uh, he was still in business with his dad at the time, he said, well, what would it cost for us to get sort of a, a startup package for a program, a little bit of training, orientation, witness, all that stuff. So we had to market value that, plus the family discounted, you all about 6500 bucks. They prepaid. That's what I needed to buy the computer, get a cell phone, get a printer, get started, plus make the mortgage payment that, that month before Christmas. Um, and here we are in 2022 on my second business, and the last one and the new one are both uh, national award-winning health and safety companies. So from a tenacity point of view, I had uh, really two choices. Um, the self-pity party, which was certainly going through my mind and implode and go personally bankrupt. Um, or find a way to provide for my family and just keep pushing. So here we are, 2022. To be honest, if you guys did create successful business, I hope you actually get in there and actually get Woodstock up to the same level. Bring it up there, and make it a you know your goal. To, uh, you know, make sure that we become award winning. Make sure this town is actually represented right. All right. Now this is a wonderful sauce, and we actually have the owner here too of this sauce, the Bayesian Taga. And I'm telling you right now, Jeff Davis did a phenomenal job creating this. This is used in so many restaurants. And there's Jeff, Jeff Davis right there. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, this sauce blows everybody away whenever they go to the actual hot sauce convention. So if you ever see this sauce on there, you must get it. And if you're a restaurant owner out there, this is the sauce to try. Make your own creation out of it. Now we get to try. It smells so good. I smelled that earlier. Oh, yeah. This is a sauce you can't explain, though. It's a sauce that you can just use on everything. <laughs> All right. This chef created this sauce, and it just blows your mind. Like I said, you could use it on anything. That is good. That's got some some nice heat to it. It is delicious. And this one I can feel. I can feel it sinking in. Oh, you're getting a little warmth out of there. Oh, yeah. You got a hiccup already. This one. Did you hear it? Yeah, he's got hiccups off the baby saga. I'm telling you right now. It's that little sneak effect of those peppers inside there, man. Oh, oh, here it comes. I'll take the line here. I apologize. <laughs> oh, that's when we're going to get some good questions out of you, right? This <laughs> is when we're going to find out the truth for everybody. Uh, all right. What type of leadership skills do you have, and uh, what type of example of you being a leader? Because obviously, being a councilman, you're going to have to be a leader. Many, many, many years ago, I used to go talking. Um, that was kind of learning a little bit of leadership. But I think if I fast forward into a little bit more of my mature years, a couple of years ago, my old business, we had in 2020 almost 27 staff full time and part time. We didn't have what we call workplace culture. We had a whole bunch of people doing their jobs, but there was no real purpose or existence of people working there. So we went on a leadership journey um, and, and took all of our staff along. So to me, um, there's lots of leadership qualities that are really, really, really required. Um, and I found the best style of leadership is one of service. 
um, me serving you. And I really believe that anybody that's an elected official, there is a job to do. Right? We, are, we are stewards of the city's money, um, the residents. So what we do, how we do, leading by example, which is engaging the community, um, really consulting the community, its business owners, its residents, and others. Um, is super, super, super important. Um, I recently posted something on Facebook as well about the budget, the spending the budget, and also about financial activism. I really think that that is super important. It's, it's, it's one thing to look at the budget and say, oh, yeah, yeah, we want to spend the money on that, but do you really understand those financials? Do you understand the history? What's going to be spent today? And what's the next three, five, or ten year plan? Like, you know, the city has really, really, really good. Um, um, financial balances in place, but I believe that in the leadership position of council, especially financial acumen is just huge uh, amongst a lot of other people. Well, balance is important, and being a hockey coach, I'm telling you right now, we are Canadian. That is an important job in this country, so thank you for that. <laughs> Next sauce we're going to try, out of the box, they're out of Kitchener, uh, this is a scotch bonnet blend, uh, we're just going to amp up the heat just a little bit, a lot of people have tried this sauce, I gave it away to a lot of people in Woodstock, and I'm telling you right now, it's enjoyable, but it's got a kick. I don't think we're going to slog it on there like we did the last one. Oh, we did anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Wes. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's go. go big or go home there, Shane. Yeah. Oh, wow. Got the garlic in there, too. Oh, yeah. This is a great wing sauce. <laughs> now, one question I can tell you right now that the city is always talking about. What is your view on, like, the homeless situation we have here in the city? I've heard lots of perspective on this. And it was actually stopped twice today and asked, what are my views on the homeless? Um, here's the way that I honestly look at it. And I hope it never happens, but I could be homeless one day. You can be homeless one day, heaven forbid, you know, one of her friends or family are out there too. Um, they're still people, they're there for a reason. So you got to understand why they're there, what's the root cause of them being there. When we see people go into the jail system, the correctional service system, when they get out, they get rehabilitated with programs, halfway out and all these different things, jobs. And I understand for some folks, probably more than what we would realize, there's a mental health component to this as well. Could there be addiction? Sure. Um, some people are addicted to hot sauce, some people are addicted to other things. Thank you. Um, so for me, it's engaging the community stakeholders, the people that are professional, whether it's the people at the inn that help the homeless with the shelter and meals, uh, other folks are doing programming, doctors, I'm not an expert, but I really believe that the city should bring those experts together and determine what's the cause, what's the root cause, what are tangible solutions, not temporary stopgap measures where it's really not going to fix anything, it's just going to either prolong, delay, or or, or what. So I, I personally have not had any dangerous or, or concerning encounters with anybody that's homeless. Quite to the opposite, I, I've had people that have moved their shopping carts out of the way so they walk on the side of the They're residents, this is home for them too. So I think it's, it's a matter of working together to find out why they're there, how did they get there, how do we actually help them. And not pay these solutions either. And, and, and I mean, there's housing for so many different issues. And that's why, like, let's say, for example, Shane, we've got committees on everything. We've got police services board committees, we've got accessibility committees, fire service committees, culture and diversity committees. Great. Well, where's the homeless and addiction committee? Perhaps we need one of those. That's a good answer. I like that. Yeah. Now we're going to get extremely hot. Let's see if uh, we can make it. <laughs> This is a honey garlic sauce from Purple Tongue Hot Sauce. And I'm telling you right now, this sauce won hottest sauce last year at heating up the Capitol. So we're not joking around with this sauce. 
but it's a great flavor sauce. It belongs on every rib out there. Once you try this sauce and pour it on some ribs and cook it up, you're gonna know this was the sauce meant for it. You ready for this, Wes? Nope, but let's do it anyway, Shane. <laughs> now you don't have to eat it all. You don't have to put too much on it. You just gotta make sure you get some good flavor. Oh, that looks out of like it. a honey garlic glaze. Look at that. Oh yeah. I just gotta pretend that's what it is. Oh, that's exactly what it is. Honey, it smells honey garlic so good. Glaze. Honey garlic. All right. Are you all ready for this one? Gotta make sure the camera knows it's on there. Let's do it. Now just so everybody knows, this has Carolina Reaper in it, a large amount. Plus the beef joclea, which is like the ghost pepper, which is a million scoville. It's hot, but the garlic's up front, the honey garlic is up front. I'm kind of like waiting with anticipation that steam is going to cut up my, cut up my ears like I start rolling around. Well, the fun part about the reaper pepper, it builds up in the back. <laughs> and then it'll sit there and just keep burning. Very nice about the reaper pepper. It's good, but you can feel it now like it's halfway, like every breath. It's like the oxygen needs the ignition source. That makes sense. That makes total sense. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. That's a great sauce, eh? Mm -hmm. Hitting you now, it's a nice little level one out. My, uh, my tongue's a little angry with me right now. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> So we were talking about homeless being like the top agenda that I believe, and I believe a lot of people think that, but what's another agenda that you believe that Woodstock finds important that needs to be corrected or needs to be actually brought upon when you first get in there? The, the, the big guy, I, I don't want to say the cause, but downtown is, is on a topic of a, lot of, a lot of people talking about downtown, and I don't disagree. I don't disagree. So we'll talk about downtown. Yep. Right? But but I and I believe in, in, in the other folks that are gonna keep waiting for the day too, hundred percent. But with downtown, um, before we moved here, my first business was downtown here from college. And I joined the downtown business BIA. And, and back then, you know you can say it's approximately thirteen years ago that I joined, they had a lot of the same issues we're facing today. Addiction, homelessness, run down buildings, empty buildings, empty lots. Just we're, we're, they were missing the we'll say the magic sauce um, for downtown. We saw council work through consultation with all stakeholders because they also had clinics downtown and rehab centers and a court at one point. So in rundown buildings and everything. But over time, with some zoning and rezoning. Um, some tax initiatives to help the empty properties and buildings get developed and invested in. They started doing some residential investment as well, and bringing in kind of intensification, I think is the proper term for it. And if you're to go downtown Cambridge today, it's, it's hot. It's cleaned up, it's doing extremely well. I mean, I know it's a bigger city, but I look at that and I say, well, if they can do it, why not us? 100% we can. There's no reason why we can't. Um, so it, it, it's it's some things in motion already. We got some cityscaping or rescaping about to be approved. Actually, think one of the next council meetings before the end of the month. So we're going to see kind of some ways of, of, of it being developed. Um, but I will say that the rest of the city needs as much investment and development in their areas, their programs, their streets, their roads, their parks. So is downtown important? Hundred percent it is. But I'm not going to be exclusive to downtown. You can't. We don't get voted in by wards. If I was a downtown councillor, downtown would be my priority. That's great. I'm a city councillor, and everybody's voting, so we're going to listen to everybody equally. For sure. Yeah. Are you ready to keep going? We got Cherry Noble here. Let me let me consult my advisor here. It's not talking to me anymore. So. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now I'm telling you right now. Look at you. It's gonna be warm. Do I have to put that? This one won awards too for the hottest sauces. Just so you all know, Eric showing up in black over there. <laughs> At oh, beautiful thing. Oh yeah. So this is gonna be pretty warm. This looks like chocolate, but I know it's not. <laughs> it's cherries. Oh, cherries. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, wow. <laughs> Can you hear Johnny Cash ring a fire? Is that just my head? I hear that. <laughs> I think you have well, some. Eric, you're a naughty, naughty man. <laughs> wow. Please accept my apologies. <laughs> Don't be sorry. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Eric's, wow. Eric's garden that he grows these things is called the Garden of Apologies, just so you know. <laughs> so Wes, what are you going to bring to Woodstock? Fire extinguishers. <laughs> Your health and safety now, come on. What are we expecting out of you? I want to make sure my tongue is going to work with me on this one. <laughs> this stuff is extremely hot. Uh, it is hot. Okay. Um, one of the things that I decided to do against my kind of campaign advisors was to make a promise on my website. So I'm going to bring a promise to the people of Woodstock, which is to serve the city with authenticity, passion, leadership with servitude for everybody that calls the city. Yes, I've got business experience, great support for my neighbors, friends, um, but it's not just about us, it's about everybody that calls this place home in the friendly city. So that, that's what I'm bringing up if I get voted in. That's just perfect. And I want to say, it's all fun. You notice, you notice the answers get shorter as the heat gets <laughs> building, <awesome>. right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, I think it's time for a plug. Uh oh. <laughs> To the dairy capital of the world, I have to have some milk. Cheers to Woodstock. <laughs> is that your first sip of milk? I'm impressed. And that is delicious, but boy, it's got you. It I am much. looking at that. I don't know. Are, do you want to go for one more question or what? One more question. One more question. One more question. All right. Ooh. Oh. Jeez. Don't, don't do that. This city council has been running for a while. There's a lot of people in there who've been there for a long time. What do you believe is the reason why some things just haven't been getting done in this city? That's a good question. That's a question that I'm personally asking because I've been in this town for 20 years and they have some great ideas that come up every once in a while. I see them out there ready to go and I find nothing even happens. So that's just my question. That's a good question. Let's get it. Right. that way? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> now I'll tell everybody. This is from Capsation Cartel. Oh, no. Sanget Menace. And I'm telling you right now. This one won hottest sauce this year at Heating Up the Capitol. It is a warm one. It's got every hot pepper in there, and it brings the heat. This is um, what I will say is from an outside perspective, because I am not privy, obviously, to behind you know, the scenes conversations and what they call off camera. Um, I believe that some things which would make really good sense of good ideas have either been stricken down or not motioned or seconded. Um, either for one or two reasons. One, maybe the motion is something that council may not be able to do themselves. So in other words, it's not within um, the capabilities or the capacity of, of our law members. Maybe it's a provincial issue, maybe it's a federal issue, maybe it's a, it's a county issue. However, I would expect and, and I would do this for folks too. And if they came to me with an issue, of which was not on my plate, I'm going to act like a single point of contact for them. And we're going to take them along the journey to the point where we can give them a warrant introduction to the people that are going to help them. So I think that's part of it. I think some of it too, and, and I want to be careful with, with things like yours, but I do believe that there are off camera things that happen where where if the majority is leaning towards one direction, good or bad or indifferent, the person with that good idea is pretty much shut down at that point. So whether or not they speak up and in camera, sometimes they do, 
Sometimes they don't. So when we hear, in, in the last four years especially, a lack of transparency, a lack of accountability, I don't think that we've got bad people on council. I really don't. I think that we've got good-hearted people on council. But when you lose sight of communication, which is half the battle, or working for those taxpayers and those residents, not quote unquote campaigning for your next election over a four year period, then you've lost the purpose of why you're there. And I think that's why we see some bad, not bad decisions, but some good ideas and good decisions getting lost in the next hour. Unfortunately, those politics. That makes a lot of sense. That's my take on it, but I'm out on the inside. You made it all the way through, Wes. I am happy for you. You said you were going to cut out of this limit. You didn't. Everybody give Wes a... If he can handle this, I think he can handle being a city councilman, to be honest. <laughs> Anything you want to say at the end? Uh, I want to say thank you to you. Shane, met you on several occasions now. Um, our friends at Van Dyke's Greenhouses, Jim, Di, and Jeremy have been uh, um, really champions for what we try to do for the community and getting this talk on the map. And to have you here today as a guest, but to have an opportunity to share with you is fantastic. Thank you for the questions. Thank you for inviting others to come today, too. They're going to have some awesome answers for you, too. So thank you for what you do, brother. All right, Wes. This is Borden Woodstock. I'm out of here for now.